they're showing as much support as they can uh, for the defense of Israel. Uh, and, and that is uh, both intended to show Israel that they are not isolated in the global uh, stage, despite the war in Gaza and all of the opposition to that war over the past months, that the Iranian strikes, uh, in a sense, um, are the higher priority uh, for the G7, uh, but that they don't want to see, they really resist mm -hmm. the potential for Israel to engage in strikes against Iran that could precipitate a direct war. And right now, I would argue you've got Benny Gantz <clears throat> largely sympathetic to that message, someone that would like to be the next prime minister uh, of Israel, and he has a vote on that war cabinet. And you've got Benjamin right. Netanyahu, um, who is fighting for his political right. life and is not sympathetic to that argument. Uh, Gantz is saying this is the time that you should strengthen alliances with countries like the U.S. and Germany. And Netanyahu is saying this is the time we've got to hit the Iranians back directly right. and hard, even if that means a more isolated and a more right. unilateral Israel. That, well, that is the nature of the debate right. inside Israel right now. Who's calling the shots in Iran right now? Do they have a legitimate government, or is it a theocracy that staggers back to 1979? Look, you, you know that um, they don't have a legitimate government in the sense that the people don't have a voice. They don't have the ability to vote for them or vote them out. Uh, and indeed, uh, there have been a lot of people, myself included, that have both believed and hoped that people power uh, would be more successful in rising up against this brutal theocratic regime. But it is in place, it is stable, it is calling the shots internationally and domestically, and it does not want a war with the United States. Uh, and so, I, I look, I think the important thing, I've been seeing on the media over the weekend, Please. you know, how extraordinary it was that the Israelis were able to defend so well against 300 Iranian missiles and drones that they knocked down 99% of them and there were not any deaths, there were not any significant injuries. And that's a great story. But let us remember that the Iranians gave a heads up as to the nature and the timing of the attack to the Iraqis. Why did they do and that? To the Turks. Okay, stop, Ian. Why did they do that, flying over Iraq and Jordan? Why does the Iranians give it away? It's like pretend war. Well, yeah, because I think they were trying to accomplish two things that are hard to do at the same time. They were trying to show a maximum display of force in responding to the Israeli strikes on Damascus that killed a high-level Iranian military official. Um, and they were trying to minimize the likelihood that their show of force led to further attacks and brought them into a war they don't want to fight. So th those those two goals that they have are not exactly fully in alignment, Tom, right? And so what, what, what they did um, was they, they tipped their cards, they showed their hand through the Turks and the Iraqis to the Americans. So the United States had the ability to send the CENTCOM commander to Israel um, to, to coordinate a response, to get your vessels and your aircraft in place in advance, to let the Israelis know what was going to happen, um, to tell the Israelis privately and publicly that there was ironclad support for Israeli defense. In other words, give the Israelis a bear hug. Yep. Help defend them as best you can, but also help constrain them and constrain specifically the prime minister in making it hard for him to engage in full-throated right. military response following this Iranian attack. That's exactly what the Iranians were hoping to accomplish. By the way, it was also following the U.S. playbook in the one week following the Iranian proxy attacks that killed three American servicemen and women in Jordan. The, the, the Americans did the same thing. And so I'm sure that the Iranians figured, because it's a dangerous thing for them to do, it worked for America. The U.S. is going to get it if we do the same thing in response. Ian, we're six months into this conflict here. I think I speak for a lot of folks when I say we just have no idea how 
Israel will get out of this situation today versus day one. How do you think this plays out going forward? Uh, I, I think most people are focused on Iran right now and less on Gaza. Uh, that will, uh, of course, change back uh, given the nature of the uh, horrible civilian casualties, the famine that's going on and the rest. But this does give the Israeli prime minister and his right wing government um, uh, more of a lease on life. They're likely to uh, be there for longer as opposed to forced out soon. That's a problem for Biden. Right. There's less focus on Gaza, which means that Netanyahu is going to have a harder time um, being restrained uh, in terms of eventual yeah. ground assault on Rafa.